Hey, welcome to Nuts and Bolts with Tone. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I have a 2012 6.7 liter power stroke that is a crank no start. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to diagnose this. And before I do that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't wanna miss. All right, let's get into it. All right, here we go. Got a 2012 F250 with a 6.7 and 152,000 miles, and it is a crank no start. Here's the codes we got right here. Fuel pump A, control circuit range performance. P0089, fuel pressure regulator A performance. And ICP too low. So now, easiest thing to do, is we're gonna go to data. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the low side fuel. And it's a switch. It's gonna read low or not low. If it reads low, that means that the low side has a problem. If it reads not low, then that means that the low side is okay. I looked this up yesterday. I'm looking at the screen through my phone. Oh, I know. We got to go to fuel. Fuel system data. All right. And the next thing we'll do is we'll look at the, at the high side uh, fuel pressure also. And you'll see that there is no high side fuel. Um... So we're gonna go to, right there, low pressure fuel system switch. If it stays low, that means the low side has a problem. Okay, so now we know that the low side has a problem. If it said not low, then it would suspect fuel filters are the problem. But since it said low, that means that we have a major fuel problem. And so we'll just look at, uh, we'll just look at the rail pressure, all right? So right there is desired, that 4350, and we're building 152. So here we go. And we are building no fuel. So the next step we're going to do is take a fuel sample and look for contamination. So we're just going to come right here to the fuel conditioning module uh, right here. There's a big fuel filter in here. Uh, this is also the low side pump. So we're going to go ahead and open up this petcock right here and we're going to drain some fluid, some fuel into this container. It is clean. I use this for AC oil. So we're going to drain this and see if we have any metal. So as you can see, I'm draining it and I want to get a good fuel sample. So I'm going to let this fill up and then we're going to let this stand for 15 minutes. And if we don't find an issue here, then we're going to be removing the fuel filters to inspect. All right, so here's our fuel sample. So we're going to let this sit. I have it up here. I have a pretty decent amount. All right, we already know the bulb didn't light, but just to confirm, we're going to go ahead and test the pins. I have the Devo back probe, uh, forward probe uh, pin right here, and I'm going to check both pins, okay? We're coming over here, and I've got my extra lead that makes this long, and we got the Power Probe Maestro, and we're going to check this for power. Okay, so this is one pin, okay, so we have ground on this pin, now we're going to check the other one. Alright, here's the other pin right there so we have power all right so during my testing uh i was trying to use a noid light to test the fuel pump and uh the noid light wasn't lighting up and i chased my tail using incorrect uh testing so i used a light bulb uh, wired into a socket and all right so for this testing here's what i used i wasn't able to show it because uh, i was in a pinch uh, so basically, uh, I got to make one of these. My coworker has this. It's a little light socket with like a 7440 bulb. And uh, it's hooked in. It's got a fuse. 
and, uh, and jumper leads. Uh, had I had this, it would have just made things a lot simpler. So all I did was I back probed the, the connector for the low side fuel pump and, uh, and turned the key on and commanded a low pump. And when this bulb lit, I knew it had power and ground and it had a load. It could, it could move amperage because it, uh, because it turned the bulb on. Uh, you can have power and ground and not have amperage because the current can't flow and that's why you use a bulb. So this is how I did this right here. I'll be doing a short video in the future making one of these as soon as I get some parts. So now what I got was the second step was to remove the fuel filters to inspect. So I removed the lower one. Let's take a look. So you can see that metal in the bottom there. So that would be from the high pressure pump. I'm still going to pull the upper one off just to see, but uh, the only way to get metal in here is from the high pressure pump. All right, let me get the upper one off and we'll take a look. All right, it's a good tip to have the fuel filter, uh, the coffee filters on six fours. I've found where if you crank over an injector through a, a coffee filter, you can find metal. In this one, I saved all the fuel and in the bottom, I had a whole bunch of what appeared to be metal. So I used a magnet and I picked it all up and you can see right there, all that metal, that is from the high pressure pump. So this one's gonna need a fuel system. You gotta replace everything. Okay, so here we are uh, with everything over here. So here is the lower fuel filter housing and you can see there are pieces of metal in there. Uh, here's what the fuel filters look like. They look pretty nasty as well. Look at that one, shows you how long they've been in there. Uh, there's some metal in the bottom of that one. I went ahead and cut the upper filter open. And then here is the telltale signs. So as I pan this around, that is all metal. And this is from the lower fuel filter. I cleaned this pan to make sure it was 100% clean and everything in here came from this truck. So you can see right there along the edge of where the fuel is, all the metal. So that confirms that the high pressure pump has come apart and it is a very costly repair. Okay, so for this repair, we are going to need this right here. There's the part number. This is a fuel contamination kit. There is a core and it has to be returned in this box. I will show you all the parts as we get them out. Okay, so we're gonna go over what goes in this uh, fuel contamination kit. Uh, the first thing you have is you have your fuel line assembly here and this goes from the driver's side rail to the passenger side rail and to the high pressure pump right there. The next thing that you have is you have your low side fuel lines. Uh, if you get a kit from SNS Diesel uh, to not to prevent this fuel uh, contamination uh, in the future, you're going to be cutting this brand new uh, line assembly. Uh, I'll put a uh, a link to uh, something there you're gonna have your high pressure pump which is in there and we'll go over this when I get to it uh, you're gonna have your bag of injectors you're gonna have both fuel rails driver side fuel rail is way longer has a sensor and a um, and a regulator on it and then the passenger side rail just as a rail you're gonna have your bag of all the injector tubes and bolts to bolt it down and you're gonna have your return line assembly and that is all of this uh, the next thing you're going to need is right here. You're going to need your low side fuel pump. And you're also going to need a box of fuel filters. And you're going to need to do an oil change and coolant. So this is everything that goes in it. Now this is something that every shop makes a mistake of. Uh, is this. When you first get this kit. The injectors come in a box and the high pressure pump comes in a, in a box and the rest of it's just in here. Well, they don't tell you that you actually need this big giant box for the core. Uh, every shop I've ever known has always lost their first core uh, on this kit because they didn't keep this big giant box and they only returned the two small ones. So keep this box, put all your parts in there. And uh... so there are a few other things that you need to do this job. Uh, first of all, you need to confirm if your low side fuel lines are right. Uh, the one I got in the kit was wrong. It took several, uh, it took a lot of research and several phone calls to the dealer to figure out what was going on. Uh, my low side, uh, my low side line had two, two wire sensors. 
the new the new line came with only one port and a three a three or four wire like transducer and uh, so it took us a while to figure that out so that was wrong uh, the other thing that's not in the fuel contamination kit is your upper intake gaskets uh, I mean, you don't have to replace them, I guess, but I mean, if you got done and you put it back together and you had a problem because of the gaskets, that would really suck. Uh, you also, um, if you're going to remove your EGR cooler, you're going to need the gaskets for the EGR cooler, and you're also going to need your water pipe O-ring, the yellow O-ring that goes to the heater pipe that comes up to the front. The other things I recommend are replacing your, cool your turbo coolant line and fitting if you haven't done that. Replace that while you do it. You have to disconnect either the coolant line from the pipe or the the line from the from the fitting. The fitting is a pain in the butt, so I do it from the pipe. So that's a good time to do that. So in the next video, I will show you how to replace this fuel system and what it all entails to get it done. So thank you for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Also, check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic. Show you all kinds of cool stuff I'm working on. Show you some tools. Show you all kinds of fun stuff. Also, check out my merchandise store where you can get a t-shirt or a coffee cup. And I also have a link down below to my new Amazon affiliate store where I show you all the tools that I buy or that I recommend buying uh, for if you don't want to spend tons of money on the Snap-on truck. So check that out. And leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.